Arduin uh, basic address at slash 16, we've got all of these bits we can play with. Right, so I'm, gonna, I'm giving you a 171 address, right? It's class B with a slash 16 as your base network. He has a class C one with a certain a smaller number of people. Mine, I could do more because it's a class B. Well, it's great. If I need 1,500 employees, what's my next available number out of all of these? Right? I can't use 1,024. That's too low. Does everybody see that? The order in binary numbers, how it works? So I'm going to use the block of 248. Are you with me so far? So I need a block size of 248. That includes the network address and the broadcast address. All right, well, that's great. How about DC? Well, DC have 800 people. Well, the next available is 1,024. Now, I have 400 in New York. Great, you can use 512. I've got 100 people in LA. Well, that's great. Skip 256 and go to 128. That, in, that includes, right? But if, if in LA you needed 128, you can't use 128. You're going to have to go to 256. You're going to have to. Why? Because you have two lost addresses, one for the network and one for the broadcast. So everybody give me a check mark so far you understand what I just said. OK, fantastic. Next, your links. Each one of these links is going to take two hosts, right? So number of users is two. But you need a block size of four. There's no such thing for two. If you did, that means that's a broadcast and a, 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 a network. You've got nothing left for those. So you need a, a block of four. So you have two usable addresses. The first one is really a network, then you have two in the middle, and then third one is a broadcast. So you're good to go, right? So having done that, then you start working out on the range and what mask you're gonna need. What, what will get me to 248, right? This is a slash 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. What's the next one? 21, so you move up to the next one. That's slash 21, you with me so far? And if you do that, then what is my range of usable addresses? Well, if you start at, at 171.100.0.0, you're going to have to add 2048 addresses. How in the heck you do that? Well, you're going to have to think about this. You can only go by 255 on the last octet. How many 255s do I need to reach this number? <laughs> You're going to have to do it like almost seven times. Your last one is 7.254. Well, what is my broadcast for this range? It will be 7.255. So what's my next available address? That would be 8.1, which is right here. Well, from there, I need 1,024 addresses. That's fine. Then you can go from there. Does that make sense? Now you say 8.1, you say, what happened to 8.0? 8.0 is a network. If you add one to 255, right? You with me so far? And that's how you find the size. So let's look at the video and see if indeed that's what we're talking about. Standard of IP addresses required are 256 So that's his scenario. We only start with the highest IP address first. So order them. So in this situation, it will be 60, 25, and 5. Six, only the IP address is required is 60, which goes into 256. The network will be wired for this web IRS at this point here. The zeros will be your host. And the other side will be your network. As demonstrated here. So that gives you the mask. And this side is all ones. This is your broadcast ID. This will give you a certain mask of 255.255.255.192.
which can now be entered into the clear. We will give you a network of the IP range, the broadcast, signal mask, and the slash format, which is the first part of the scenario. In the second part of the scenario, we have 25 addresses. This is 2 to the power of 5. The network we will write at this point here with the red arrows. With the right, left hand side being your network, and the other side being your, your host ID on this section. So, once it is the broadcast ID for the whole section. This will give you the smash format of A plus A plus A is 24 plus 3 slash 27, 255.255.255.224. This can now be entered in the table as the second part of the We have the network, the IP, broadcast, signal mask, and slash 27 format. We will now proceed on to the final part of the scenario. The number of addresses required are five. <coughs> this will be that where your network is divided. This side, the right hand side, will be the host. The left hand side is the network. We will then be able to determine the slash format, which in this case will be slash 29. We will graduate this as 255.255.255.248. We will now be able to fill in the final part of the table. The network is the IP range, the broadcast, submit mask, and the format. That is the table for the network 192.168.1.0 with IP. Alright, so everybody see how we came up with this table? No. Yeah, you will have to He's going to another example, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, I should have a VLSM uh, link here eventually, uh, but you could look it up. All I did is went to YouTube and did VLSM, right? So it was within the first or second link in there. So let's get back to this. Uh, I didn't save this file, have I? It's going to ask me to save it. So I'm going to go to desktop here. Dev, this is lecture. This would be lab six. In class part two. Okay, we'll do in class part three on Thursday. Okay, where we're going to be doing um, network summarization, right? So right now you're doing VLSM. So does everybody understand how I came up with this table? Right, so I'm, I'm looking for the mask that I'm going to need. I am also going to look for what? The starting address and the ending address within that block. And I can try it. So for example, for the LA, I would like this one to be 171.100 and that would be dot 14, dot two. I'll leave the uh, dot one for the, uh, and that would be slash 25. All right, so that's, that's what I'm doing with the LA. Now the dot one, I'm gonna leave it for the router. So I'm going to dot two. However, I can use the 126 for this one. That would be the last one here. So this would be 171.100.14.126 slash 25. Do not use slash dot 127. That would be the broadcast for this network, okay? So for this router here, once I set up the ports, which I haven't, you know, uh, I will write down the addresses that I need for that. So you always organize your work before you do any configuration. This will be the DC. Start, always start with the first and last. This would be a 
and look at DC, I need 8.1 for the first one, so I'm gonna do an 8.2. The reason is, again, is because I'm gonna give the 8.1 to the router. This is a slash 22. So one very important aspect of this is that your subnets are not the same. That's the point of VLSM, is you're gonna use a variable length subnet mask to maximize or, or to minimize the number of lost or wasted IP addresses in any block. So you wanna maximize the utilization of a block. That's the point of the LSM setup. While you're doing this, you have to make sure that your next block of addresses, right, is chosen carefully so you don't have what we call overlap. Overlap, you may not think about it, but it could be the same IP address used on two different networks. And then you're gonna have problems reaching any destinations. So overlap is to be avoided. All addresses have to be unique. And this is why I test it for the whole range. So for, I am in the DC, take your time, you look at DC, the last one is 11.254. So uh, 100.11.254. And that would be a slash 22. That would be my last computer there. So that's how I'm gonna know that I'm testing this properly. This would be Baltimore. So Baltimore, I'm gonna use the 171.100.0.2, the next available one, I'll leave dot one for the router again, and that will be a slash 21. So notice I'm not even setting the actual computers, but I'm writing things on my paper as to what is exactly I'm gonna be doing. 171.100, and this will be a dot seven, dot 254. And indeed, all I have there is starting and ending addresses of actual hosts, and that will be a slash 21. Okay, same thing here. This would be New York. So I look at New York, I have 171.100.12.2, and that would be a slash 23. And this will be the last one in that block. So it will be 171. Dot 100, and I'm looking at dot 13 dot 254 with a slash 23. This way I know I am testing the concept fully, or fully testing the concept to be correct. Okay. Now the routers don't have any uh, modules on them. This would have a serial and a fast ethernet, so let's start with that. Uh, let's start with the uh, Baltimore router, because the, the way the uh, simulator gives, so I'm gonna start with the uh, three, three serial ports. and one fast ethernet. Turn it on and then I'll come back to it and, and decide which, which one goes where. Next, this one right here, will have one serial, one fast ethernet. Turn it off first. Start with the serial. Then put a fast ethernet here. Turn it back on. Then this one would have again, one fast ethernet. So they're very consistent in terms of building these field routers. It's always good, you know, to get kind of the same equipment across because the configuration will be consistent. 
and turn it on. If you, if you have a fancy device, just try to make it in one area, maybe redundant if possible, if you have the money for it. Otherwise, keep everything simple. Fast Ethernet. And then turn it on. That's it. Now I'm going to strategize for one more thing. Is I'm going to try to figure out what to do with my ports. Notice here I have serial, I have three serial, zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero. I have to decide which way they're going to head. I'm going to have the zero, zero go to New York. And, but you're going to have to decide what the link numbers are going to be. Now in my lab, just to make sure that we're, we're it's, link one actually was DC, link two was New York and link three was LA. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay with that, okay? So I'm gonna stay with that. So link one, so from Baltimore to DC will be serial zero to serial zero, right? So uh, I'm gonna write right here for the Baltimore router, S zero slash zero, okay? That would be link one. So you look at link one and here he is. And I'm gonna assign it IP address 171 dot 100 dot 14 dot 129. And that would be a slash 30, by the way, 254. Uh, two, yeah, 252. So now, uh, on Baltimore, I have S10, that would be New York. That would be link two. So S1 slash zero, make it bigger. Slash 32, slash 30, I'm sorry, there's no such thing as slash 32. So S, one slash zero, that would be 171.100.14, and that would be dot .133 slash 30. Just concentrate on the uh, serial ports first. And then S, two slash zero, that would be 171.100.14. So that's link 3137. That goes to LA. Slash 30. Now you could say something like this to LA. And this here will be to DC, I mean to New York. And this here will be to DC. Do you see that? So it shows you what you're doing. Now, it will have its own local address. But before I do that, let me see what the address is and it's called F30. So that way there won't be any mistakes. You take your time. And that would be F, make capital F, three slash zero. And that would be 171.100.0.1 slash 21. That would be my local address. <clears throat> So has everybody seen how I organize my work? So that means when I go to the router, I know exactly how to set it up without any mistakes. You're gonna do the same thing for New York and DC. So I'm gonna to go to DC now. And on the DC side,
um, see what, what I have. I have S00 and F10, all right, so we're good. So on the DC side, S0 slash zero, okay? And that would be pointing towards New York. So you look at 129, so this should be 130. 171.100.14.130 to Baltimore. You point to Baltimore. And then you have F zero slash zero. And that would be 171.100 dot eight dot one and that would be lo uh, oh slash 22 that would be a local put your slashes here this would be a slash 30 okay. very important to show what you're doing okay let me hit save just in case something goes wrong and I'm going to do the same thing with now New York. So I'm going to type NY. And then for New York, I'm interested in the uh, serial port that goes towards Baltimore. So first, just go to New York, hover over it, and look at your ports. Just put your mouse right there. I have serial 00, zero and fast ethernet 10. Ah, I could have a problem with the uh, DC, so let me go back. Ah, it is fast ethernet one zero, so I have to fix that. So this is fast ethernet one zero. Let me make sure that, yeah, so the Baltimore, I know it's F three zero, so we're good. So is everybody seeing how I'm paying attention to make sure that I can see in parallel what's going on? So I have S zero zero. And that would be the one pointing towards Baltimore that will be link two and because 133 so this would be 134 link two so that will be 171.100.14.134 slash 30 to Baltimore. I'm in New York. And then I have a fast ethernet, fast, one slash zero. And that would be 171.100.12.1 slash 23, local. Okay, you take your time. Do not rush any of this stuff. Okay, next, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna do the one for LA, so LA. We know that's link three, right? So we start with that. So just go over, hover over the router, and what does it have, serial zero, zero? Definitely it's going to Baltimore, if that's how I'm connecting it. And then fast ethernet one zero. So I'm gonna go over here. And I'm gonna do S zero slash zero. That's gonna to go to 171.100. This is link three, the next element, which is 138.14.138.14.14. Baltimore. And then you have a, a local F1 slash zero. And that would be 171.100.14.1 slash 25. And that would be local. And there you go.
double check, verify your numbers, make sure everything is right, because that's how you're gonna set up your router. So has everybody seen this transitional thing that I just did here? This allows me to set up my routers properly. Not only that, when I start setting up the uh, cables, I will know how things work. So I'm gonna go to Fast Ethernet. This will be Fast Ethernet 1.0. I'm gonna stay with this cable. I'm gonna go to this Fast Ethernet to Fast Ethernet 1.0. You always verify your table above to make sure that is the kind of connection you want. And this will be Fast Ethernet 3.0, right? So the last one here is F3.0, that is correct. And then go from here, Fast Ethernet 1.0 to 1.0, and that is correct. Next, we're gonna go for DTE, DCE. We're gonna to have to decide what to do. I'm gonna make this router a DCE router. Everybody else is DTE, sure. All the way, so I'm just gonna write DCE once. Okay, so you're gonna take a clocked wire. You're gonna to go to link one first, and that would be S0 to this S0. This would be link one, right? So if you're not sure, just write down link one, L1. So you know this is your first link. And we could tell from link one, what addresses you're supposed to have? 129 should be on this router, indeed, to DC. And then from DC to Baltimore, that will be 130 over here. Great, so I'm gonna take my DC line again, go over here to link two, start out at one zero, and go over here. So, and that goes to New York, to zero zero. Perfect. Next, I'm gonna go from here, set up this router to LA. That's it. That's how you get it done correctly with minimum errors. Now we can go into each router and do the setup for all the ports. Then we're gonna do VLSM uh, implementation through RIP. To, to, to take advantage of the LSM. Well, well, the one thing I didn't do is I didn't actually set up the IP addresses on the devices themselves, right? So that's the first thing you wanna do. You wanna to go to the computer first and set up their IP addresses. It's tedious. No one said you're signed up for a non-tedious job. The gateway for this is 171.100.14.0. Dot one, that's the gateway. Okay, now for the static IP address, you're gonna go over here and you're gonna say, for this computer, that's what I want. I want 171.100.14.2. Now, this is a slash 25. So this would be a 255. And this would be a 128. Is that understood? So you cannot make mistakes here. So you start with this part to make sure all your computers have the correct subnet mask. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this computer right here. Go to the configuration, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, default gateway will be 171 dot 100 dot 14 dot one. This fast ethernet happened to be the last one on the range. So this would be 171 dot 100 dot 14 dot 126. Now I could have picked one to 125, I could have picked dot three, whatever it is. But this is 255 dot 128 because that is a slash 25. Is that understood? Okay, 
Now, how about this computer right here? Well, that computer, let's go to the configuration. The gateway for that one will be 171.100.12.1. And its address will be this particular one, and I, I wrote it there, 171.100.12.2. That's what you want. Leave the router for dot one. Now this one here is dot 254, remember that? I asked you the question, somebody answered correctly. That's your slash 23. Okay, so you're gonna do the same thing again for this one. You're gonna configure it. You're gonna put the uh, default gateway, 171.100, and that would be dot 12, dot one, and then the fast ethernet, for this one, it happens to be the last one in the block. 171.100.13.254. And same thing, this will be 250, 254. As a matter of fact, these two computers can talk to each other. So if you do, if you go to desktop, you go over here. Remember this one is 12.2. So you could do a ping 171.100.13.254 and see if you can go through. And you should be. And sure enough, I'm going through the switch. So does everybody see how you test to make sure that everything you're doing works properly before you move on to the next level. So I am going to stop here because you have to continue with this lab until we meet again, which means you're gonna to have to set up the IP addresses here. You're gonna to have to go to the routers and follow these instructions. Please review this video to make sure you understand or understood what I did, right? And on top of that, you have a Word document that shows, okay, I, I didn't show you how I set them up, but you, you need to do that. But I show you how to set up later on to test the address. So we'll take over from here on Thursday, and that what we'll do is after that, we're in, we'll change the scenario where I might have more networks downstream in LA, for example, but we wanna summarize all the LA networks into one. That's what network summarization is. So we don't have to have huge routing tables. That's the point. So routing summarization is going to save the writing into the a router table by the routers. So it will be quicker in terms of switching packets. That's the big advantage of routing summarization. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. Has everybody understood what, what needs to be done right now?